Hello and welcome to this quick episode of Aren't You Exhausted? Um, my name is Ashley. Hello. Fellow big back bitch talking about problematic people on the internet. Um, I thought I have been away long enough. I took a little bit of a break, kind of. Um, from everything going on. And I noticed that Amber Lynn and Chantal have posted um, some new content over the few days that I've been gone. And I thought, why not talk about some of the things discussed in both of their uh, video uploads? So we're going to start with Amber. She did a QA, and a um, I guess from Instagram, where she asked people for content ideas because this bitch cannot come up with anything authentic. It has to be something that's been reran through the vlog influencer cog for years um, when they can't creatively come up with content of their own. They look towards their audience for inspiration. And so why not bring up topics that you haven't wanted to talk about in the past or that make you uncomfortable for viewership? Amber starts out the <laughs> Q&A saying that uh, she is going to scroll through the hundreds of questions and answer the first 30 as long as they're not repetitive and uh, she's going to answer them regardless of what they are asking. So I still feel like they're heavily edited, <laughs> just saying having looked over what she discussed. I feel like it was still heavily edited towards being vaguely controversial, but not actually spilling any actual tea. Somebody asked if she cheated on an ex. Her answer was yes. The last time she had cheated on someone was when she was 17 years old. I'm assuming she was discussing when she was talking to Crystal when she was still technically dating Cassie, Cassidy, Casey. But that's not the only time, bitch, that you've been <laughs> unfaithful. Let's just let's just kind of dive into that because not only was that cheating, because you were emotionally involved with somebody else while still living with an ex. You guys had your relationship was already falling apart at that point. And you just decided to move on without actually moving out. <laughs> but that that's, that's kind of your MO at this point. Then you did similar with Crystal when you started talking to Destiny, because you were talking to Destiny over an app. And that kind of took a more intimate turn. And you were still living with Crystal and having everything provided to you by Crystal's parents at that point, because you hadn't started the the YouTube train of making money yet, quite yet. And then when that relationship failed, you moved in with Destiny. Y'all did the moving in thing really quickly. And then the relationship ending with Destiny, you still were living with Destiny. Destiny was still sleeping in the same bed as you. You guys were still on the verge of being intimate or you wanted intimacy to happen. I'm not sure what was going on there. I know you guys were very physical, but you started dating Becky Becky moved in and then we got the whole you weren't actually in love with Becky you guys didn't have a relationship like that very fucked up of you knowing Becky's past and how she had dealt with people in her past using her essentially and not really feeling anything for her very shitty but you had no problem doing that and then in turn when y'all's relationship was failing, making her stay there with you until you moved the, the, the new one in. This seems to be an ongoing theme and where you may not see it as cheating and you may have convinced and manipulated your, your ex into thinking that it wasn't you cheating. Um, the emotional cheating was already there. You didn't just meet these people organically and form a relationship with them. It was, you had been planting that seed ahead of time. And then when the mood struck, when the time was just right, you played it into in a relationship. And that's, that's the thing with you. You can't stay single for very long. And it's really shitty how you do people. It's very manipulative. And I don't see how people can think that you are a good person after seeing how you've treated people openly on your channel and seeing the end of every relationship be the beginning of a new relationship, but at the backs of the people that you were previously with, because you're still feeding into that relationship type 
back and forth with the exes. Like you were still wanting them to sleep in bed with you. You were still wanting open communication. You were still wanting a friendship with these people, but while also moving on and physically, (laughs) mentally, emotionally moving your feelings towards another person. I don't see how that's right. You can claim trauma and all this other shit from your past is what builds into that, feeds into that, but I just don't buy that. I just don't buy that. It just makes you look narcissistic. It makes you look... And I know I'm not the only one that thinks that. There are people out there that may ask about you for, you know, being so strong and being able to move on and, you know, praising you for being a big woman and getting it back out there into the dating game and yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to be that person because I just think it's gross how you treat people. And I'm never going to be that person to give you ass pads. I'm sorry. I would not give anybody ass pads if they treated people like this. Moving on to the questions that were asked. I'm reading through the transcript, by the way, because I refuse to watch the video. Sorry. Oh, we, we, we talked on the, sub, the Ozempic not working anymore. If she was quitting it or what was happening there. Somebody asked what her thoughts were on people saying that she's either quitting Ozempic rather than it just not working. So she claimed she she wholeheartedly blames it on the medication just not being it, it not working. The medication is just not working for her anymore um, and is trying to make the vague statement that this is normal for a lot of people that some people have a hard time with this drug staying consistent so the lower doses seem to work fine for a while and then once they get up in the higher doses they just don't work as well and then she talked about going on manjaro i don't think any of it's going to work for her honestly because we're not working on the actual issue at hand here which is her food addiction we're just trying to uh have that quick quick success that that easy pill of success without actually working on what's causing it and yes a lot of people are successful on ozempic but guess what as soon as they're not able to keep up with that medication or have to go off of it a huge percentage of them are unable to keep up with that success that they had on the medication and that's because it's only meant to be temporary it's not supposed to it's not even supposed to be used towards this but it's been bastardized to be used towards weight loss And it's not a long-term fix. It's a temporary fix. You are supposed to be working on a lifestyle change in the process, and Amber has not. We're continuing to eat out. We're continuing the same sedentary lifestyle that we've always had. And you may think that she's independent and doing all these, like, girl boss things, all these big moves behind the scenes. But in reality, your mom takes you everywhere. You're a child. Like, I'm sorry. Independence would be taking Ubers places, taking taxis places, taking public transit places, not to being dependent upon your mother to drive you everywhere that you need to go, every place that you need to go. That is being a child. I'm sorry. Moving on from that, someone asked if she would ever talk to a guy and she said no, that she's lesbian. My whole thing about that is her whole like dismissal of any kind of attraction towards men. I'm just like, where was this when she said that she was double fisting guys in movie theaters? Where was this when Jade had wanted to possibly bring in a male into their relationship and her saying she'd be into it? Where was the same energy? If anything, you're bisexual or pan, but I wouldn't call you strictly lesbian. You're not put off by men, obviously. Um, mom, mom. Someone asked if she had spoken to Valentine since they've broken up. Um, she said that after they broke up, they wanted to try being friends. They wanted to, or did you want to, Amber? I feel like that's a very you coded thing, wanting to carry on a relationship after it's over, especially if it ended to where you guys are not on friendly terms. Let's let's take a look at this right here. You told us that Valentine was living essentially a double life and had cheated on you while you guys were in a long distance relationship. Why would you want to stay connected to that person if they did you dirty like that? That they lied to you for months that you had, like the entire time that they had known you, honestly. (laughs) 
why would you want to stay connected to that person like that? She said it didn't work out. And the last time that they talked was maybe like two weeks ago that Valentine had contacted her because she had sent her a screenshot of a TikTok that Amber had posted and she was pretty upset about it. So she was hurt by Amber posting shit about her online, which I get like you don't want your fucking business out there. And Amber has to make content on it. Like, call me fucking (laughs) nitpicky about it, but I feel like that was very petty bitch energy to start posting like the oh, cry me a river fucking TikToks, vaguely hinting at issues going on in your relationship. Now, if you were people like me that had seen you (laughs) throughout most of your relationships, you would have just guessed that you were talking about a previous relationship, you know, like with Jade or with Destiny because Destiny also cheated on you or whatever. But I I honestly would have never guessed that it was with the current person. But having known that now and seeing that you are posting these petty ass things to get under the woman's skin and kind of make her feel guilty about the situation, I don't think it's... I think you were pissy because it wasn't going the way that you wanted to. And you're stuck back at being lonely and dependent upon your mother. This was a chance for you to not be having to be so heavily dependent upon your mother for your day to day life and being able to get out there again, I guess. I don't know. But you never took this person's like consideration (laughs) into the fact because it's all about you and you making money off of the backs of these people, these extras in your life. And we're even doing it now with alluding to the new person that you started talking to. Because you can't, (laughs) you can't be fucking alone. It's been two weeks since you broke up with this person. You said June 15th, I believe. So how long has it actually been? June 15th. So that would have been a Saturday. One, two. Okay, so it's been almost, almost a month. It's been three weeks to the day. It's been almost a month that you've broken up with this person. But at the time you made this video, it's been almost two weeks. You couldn't stay single for more than two weeks. You're already talking to somebody new and flirting with the idea of them being with you in a relationship. Like, I just, I don't know. It just screams desperation to me and it makes you look so bad. I just don't know. I don't know what you're thinking when you tell people this. And the fact that you can't leave any of your life private is even more baffling to me because then you are going to sit here and bitch about people being too invasive about the things that you share but then you share things that you shouldn't if you don't want people to be questioning things you know what I mean questioning timelines and everything else I just don't get it and I can understand the ex being hurt and being a little bit bitchy about you sharing parts of y'all's relationship online because you know god forbid somebody did find out who the hell she was how would that look on them your followers and stuff and your ass patters going after them saying all these this mean shit towards them they've seen how they've treated people in your past do you really want that for people in your future like do we want to continue making the same mistakes over and over again i guess that's kind of on brand for your channel the brand of insanity doing the same thing over and over again hoping for different results but like do we want to keep making the same mistakes and claiming we're making progress i'll leave it at that Let's see. Someone asked why she didn't meet Valentine first before wanting to have her move in. Uh, Amber goes on to say because they had a lot of things that were going on, obviously, and that it made it impossible for them to just like meet up before moving in, which I find odd because I don't know if it's just a me thing and I'm older, but like, I don't think I could live with somebody that I hadn't at least met a few times to kind of see what it's like. Um, My husband and I were long distance for years. We were long distance for like three years. We met each other the first time and we visited one another back and forth over the course of that three years, quite a few times before we were like, hey, you want to move in together? You want to get a place together? You want to make a home together? You know, building that trust with somebody and like actually finding out who they are. You can't do that over the phone. You can't do that through texting. You can't do that really a long distance. You've got to kind of have to see in person if you can live with that person. It's very rare that it works out that 
two strangers are able to come together and live under one roof without having at least practiced it in theory by visiting one another. Um, I don't know. That's just me. That's how I feel about it. There may be differences of opinions there. I mean, some of these questions were like very, who cares? Asking what kind of person that she goes for. What is her type person, personality wise? And Amber just listed off like very average things, very, very basic things like be funny, have a personality, be able to communicate, get along with, be friends, whatever. I mean, very basic. She then goes on to say that she, someone asked, can you tell us about your favorite reaction channel besides that they're a woman? So I actually, okay. So <laughs> someone asked, could you tell us about your favorite reaction channel besides that they're a woman? And Amber alludes to having a crush on one of the reaction channels. I don't know who the fuck she's talking about. I don't know of any reaction channel that paints her in any decent of a light. I mean, they're all calling her out on her shit for the most part. So I'm interested to know who the hell she's talking about. Um, if you know, leave it down in the comments below because I'm fucking clueless. But she goes on to say, like, out of the three main gay men that... <laughs> Do commentary on her. Alex, Zach, and Jordy, who would be on her list of like hate, I guess hate, Mary kill, or I, I forget how it went. Oh, on her list of besties blocked or acquaintance. And it was out of Alex, Zach, and Jordy. And so she said at this moment that it would go Alex, Zach, Jordy. Oh, no, no, no. Acquaintance would be Zach, besties is with Jordy, and blocked would be Alex. And I'm just like, what did Alex do? <laughs> what the fuck did Alex do? Uh, for one, I feel like he and Zach are probably the nicest out of both of the reaction channels that cover Amberlynn. We know Jordy is kind of feral <laughs> when it comes to Amber, but like Jordy, I mean, Zach and Alex are pretty, pretty mellow. I feel and what did Alex I'm wondering what Alex did like I'm gonna have to go watch the last few live streams or recorded content that he has directed towards Amber because I'm like what did he do someone asked if she's talking to somebody she said yes uh, does her mom enjoy being in her videos she said yes oh she's taking up vaping again so this is my thing with the vaping she started vaping again which this is a week behind, so she's been vaping the prior week as well. So we're left to assume that that's probably why the Ozempic is not working because we've heard before that the munchies kind of overpower the <laughs> dulled uh, food addiction when she's on Ozempic. So they're kind of can canceling each other out and that's probably why it's not working. I don't know why she would go back to Ozemp or <laughs> back to um vaping if she was planning on doing ozempic and upping the dose and trying to be successful in this uh and that's probably why she's gaining weight again we're going through the exact same cycle that we went through the last time she was on ozempic where she's not willing to give up her vices and in, in, in the ability to have success with ozempic as a program we've gained weight we're back on vaping and we're eating trash i mean but she's all <laughs> I loved, I love this part. It's not nicotine though. It's Delta 8. So that's better <laughs> because nicotine is so addictive. At this point, I would almost feel that Delta 8 is addictive because it's something that you can't break free from. You're always going back to it. And you know, you say that like seven weeks you went without it, but the fact of the matter is you can't stop going back to it. So that is addictive. That is addiction. You like the feeling that it gives you while you're vaping it, like sucking on something and inhaling something that is altering your fucking chemistry. I don't, I don't see what's not connecting. What, what, what brain neurons are not <laughs> firing off, letting you know that this is not a good idea. If you're trying to lose weight is to go back to vaping when you know it causes you to have munchies and you're trying to lose weight. For health right and like my whole thing on the whole <laughs> Amber's channel thing is 
I don't think we're ever going to see her break free of the 400s. And the, like, hear me out. I'm not just being mean. And, you know, I'm it's coming from a fellow fatty. I'm not bashing her because she's big. I'm bashing her because she has made this a weight loss channel, a weight loss vlog channel by talking about and discussing her weight on a daily <laughs> fucking basis. Um, I know she likes to think that we shouldn't hold her to that. But if that's what you're sharing with us, we have to hold you to what you're sharing. You're sharing your weight. You're sharing your struggles with weight. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> and the whole thing with Amber's channel is I think that we're not going to see below 400. And that's because, for one, she's afraid of what she's going to look like smaller. She's looking at Tammy Slayton, who lost all that weight and has all that loose skin. And that's her number one fear is all that loose skin. Number two is... She knows her bread and butter is with people watching her eat and showing her fat body online for the people that are fetishizing that area of her life. Those are, <laughs> are watching her videos on a daily basis. I know she has a small percentage that watch her for her actual content, but it is very small. If we're looking at numbers, we're looking at the whole of her channel she has over 200,000 people subscribed to her, yet monthly, we're only seeing maybe a quarter of that, maybe a quarter of that, are watching her content. Out of that quarter, what do we think is the average of people actually giving a shit about her content versus people that are just watching for the shit show or watching for her aesthetic and I, I say aesthetic by watching a fat person eat and show their fat body online so we're gonna look at how many comments she's received on this video 910 comments so out of those 910 comments do we want to take a guess how many of those comments are kind versus ones that are critiquing what she's showing I'm going to say a third of them are kind and people that are actually authentic with wanting her to do well and wanting her to continue what she's doing and seeing no wrong in it, seeing no wrong in her stories that she's telling and are pre pretty oblivious to her either past or current self online. And then the remainder are people that have been watching her forever and are willing to call her out on her bullshit. Some are more harsh than others. But I think at this point, some of the harshness is a little bit deserved because you continue to gaslight and manipulate an audience and people are just sick of it. I can understand it. I, I get it. I get it. Um, let's see here. Oh, we went over the hypocrite thing, the hypocrisy. Um... And that being a hard word for her. <laughs> um, someone was like, did you ever miss the joy food gave you? Um, and she goes on to say, honestly, no. And, you know, this is another issue I have with her is her not taking accountability for her food addiction. If you didn't have any joy in the food <laughs> in what food gave you, you wouldn't continue to constantly go back towards fast food, to go back towards the snacks and stuff that you fill your house with because you're alone and you're bored. And I get it. Bored eating is my, is my crutch. Like anytime I'm bored, I eat. And that's something that I've been trying to work on fixing. It's a struggle, but that's what's happening here. And to say that the food is not giving you any joy, then why are you going back to it? Why is that your go-to? And why are we why are we partaking in things that are further furthering that feeling of joy from food, which is the munchies from 
you know, partaking in Delta 8 and CBD and, like, all of that shit. Um, <clears throat> there has to be some kind of joy with food or you wouldn't go back to it so readily. Uh, we're now back to eating out, I'm sure, multiple times a day. I mean, the last few times we've seen you out with your mom, you guys went out to eat and you were ordering the same thing, the salmon and the potatoes. You have your fixations, but, like... To sit here and try to tell an audience that you don't overeat and then tell us in the next breath that you've gained weight, there's got to be a, a slip up somewhere. You don't just pack on weight from eating air. You know what I mean? And you can blame it on your lymphedema and lipedema all you want. Gaining 10 pounds in two days I'll give five of that to the lymphedema lipedema just from your salt intake alone. But like some of that is your doing from overindulging. I to talk about her coping mechanisms and stuff through taking Ozempic. Like obviously that's not working out if you're going back to vaping. Um... She's talking about meeting up with a friend sometime soon and drinking again, um, partaking in buzz balls. I don't know if she's meeting the girl that she's been talking to. I feel like that's very quick, but pretty on par with Amber. So I guess we'll find out eventually <laughs> a month from now. <laughs> the rest, I think, is very unimportant. Yeah, the rest is kind of boring. Asking if she's left-handed. Who the fuck cares? Um, let's go on to Chantal. Because I am I know she's been a shit show. <laughs> so, the one thing about Chantal is, like, if you followed for any amount of time since she's been in Kuwait, you know that every time that she interacts with a herd of camels out in the desert in Kuwait that she ends up getting very ill after. She ends up picking some kind of infection up or she just ends up overexerting herself in the condition that she's in right now. And it lands her either in the hospital or <laughs> on the, in her throes of the bed for a few days. I don't think this is going to be any different. Apparently, people were speculating that she was visa hopping because she was missing from the internet for a few days and then she popped up on a faceless uh i don't know if it was a live stream or video um talking about being ill um that her blood sugar was very high despite her medicine and she was having issues health wise and that's why she wasn't showing herself on camera that she had no energy and she had thrown her back out again <laughs> I mean, she's a fucking mess. But um, she did showcase live in the Kuwait heat. I do give her credit for going out in this, but then it's also very reckless because you're type 2 diabetic with uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled blood sugar levels, and you had just suffered from a thrown out back. And physically, I don't think you can do this. Yet we're out here pushing ourselves in the heat being a fat person, being dehydrated, and not in, in good physical form to be out doing this stuff. And then throwing caution to the wind and going around camels. It's just, what are we doing? I feel like Sala at this point is really trying to fast track his inheritance from her. And I'm just like... Can she not see all the red flags? I know that she thinks that this is the right thing to do. And maybe even the doctors and stuff are trying to push this on her there in Kuwait. But this is not something a severely obese, severely unwell diabetic should be doing. Like, this is not it. Already, your immune system is weakened from having type 2 diabetes and from not being healthy overall, your immune system's gonna be down. Having prior infections that haven't even had time to fucking fully heal right now, and we're just throwing caution to the wind, doing all the bad things, doing everything 
wrong. <laughs> Instead of eating right and resting and making sure we're hydrated and going to the doctor, we're eating takeout, eating salad with shit tons of dressing on it, um, probably snacking still, uh, deciding to go out in the Kuwait heat and pet camels, all the bad things. Um, <laughs> I, I just don't understand this. This defiance is just overwhelming at times watching it from afar. And I haven't been creating content on Amber and Chantal um, as actively as I have in the past because I feel like their content is kind of lulled to the same repetitive pattern. And like, how many times can you give commentary on the same thing over and over again? But I feel like Chantal is really teetering that edge of, is this going to be the end? Like, is the end near? And that's very morbid to think of, but from what she's shown and how fast it's degraded over the, her time in Kuwait, I'm questioning, like, is it morbid to continue to watch her do this to herself? And I feel the same with Amber sometimes, just not to the extent as Chantal. I feel like Chantal is, like, speed running, <laughs> being immobile like are we are we doing this to fast track a lot of really irreversible health issues um and i guess that's it i don't want to be too harsh and i don't want this to be kind of a bum bummer of an episode talking about this morbid piece of it but i'm just i'm trying to give uplifting commentary and explain the situation um but yeah, I I hope they both do better. But we're talking about two people that are very defiant and very much want to do what they want to do on their time, which okay. <laughs> um I think that's going to be it, y'all. I will see you guys Monday night for a live stream. We're going to be talking about a few of the TikTok people on our roster kind of giving updates things that I found um and some commentary on them and then I don't know what we'll discuss after that maybe we'll talk a little bit about this see what you guys think um but yeah I I take I take four or five days away from the computer and this is what I come back to <laughs> Which, uh, I mean, I should have, I should have known. Anyhow, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.